okay let's uh, recall what we were doing last time so we had uh, started looking at scattering in interacting theories and we defined in and out states which are states defined at or basic states defined at time t equal to zero okay so let me quickly remind you what we were doing so we had defined in states and out states okay so let me write it as so in general in any theory i'm writing i'm not necessarily in in a real scalar field theory but any arbitrary theory um, so i will write alpha out okay so that specifies some out state where alpha um, are the appropriate labels and similarly you will we will write beta in okay so these are in and out states so for example here beta will specify the particle content for t going to minus infinity so if you take this in state and you evolve it by folding it appropriately with um, uh, with, with uh, folding functions and you evolve backward in time and in the far past, you are going to see it as um, free particles, which are well separated. Okay, and the particle content is described by beta. Okay, and similarly, the in far future, this out state will evolve into uh, a state of into a set of particles, which will be labeled by this alpha. And in case of real scalar field theory, it's only the momentum which is. Uh, the label and the total number of particles in in the in the state that would be the label okay so that is what it is and then we maybe let me just be more specific for um, the real field theory case so this as i wrote last time it will be these labels okay for for real scalar field theory and alpha out p n out And we also define S matrix element to be the following. S alpha beta was defined to be an inner product of these two states. So if a state beta this so the amplitude of state beta in to be found in alpha out that is what the definition of s matrix is and for the case of a real scalar field theory this would be this thing i wrote as s so here let's see beta so anyway these labels are not matching so in in is no that's fine so in is q1 is labeled by these uh, labels and out is labeled by these momenta okay so that's how we wrote s alpha beta in this case and then this was just um, this inner product p1 to pn out that's correct Okay, that's what we had written last time. Okay. So we'll make some um, elementary observations this time and uh, more detailed studies will be done next time. So let's ask first thing how, what's the inner product of these states alpha out and beta in? 
I mean, within themselves, not not of an out state within state. So let's say I'm given a state alpha out and another state alpha prime out, okay, where alpha is not equal to alpha prime. Okay. For example, if let's say both alpha and alpha prime, let's say they both contain five particles, I mean five labels, P1 up to Pn and Q1 up to Qn, Qn, then alpha not equal to alpha prime, not equal to alpha prime would mean that uh, these five labels are not the same as those other five labels, okay? That is what it means. So we would like to know what is this? So uh, it's easy to understand what this is. So suppose you take a basis state at time t equal to zero, let's say it is alpha out, and evolve it into far future. So it will correspond to a set of particles which are labeled, which are, the, the particle content will be alpha, okay? If you start with an, a different state, alpha prime out, then in far future, the particle content will be alpha prime, okay? Now, since we are saying alpha and alpha prime are not the same, they are different, then these two uh, states in far future are different. And there is no possibility of a state alpha out to evolve into, to give a state in far future that corresponds to the state that you would have got by evolving alpha prime out. Okay, so that uh, there is, since the possibility is zero, that amplitude is zero, so we can write here that's zero. Okay, now we can ask about the normalization of these states. So, what is in general, where I am allowing now alpha prime to be equal to alpha also. Okay, so remember these, these basis states, alpha out, they evolve to these states which correspond to free particles and we have already uh, talked about these free particles in the previous course and you know how these states are normalized. You normalize them to Dirac delta function, okay? So the same will be true here. You can almost see that this is going to be proportional to, um, I'm, this is just a notation, short, shorthand notation, but this will be proportional to this, okay, where in, in the case of uh, where alpha is only the momentum labels, you will have uh, direct delta functions, delta cubes, but let me use a shorthand notation and just write delta of alpha minus alpha prime. Okay, so, so clearly when alpha is not equal to alpha prime, then you get zero, so they are orthogonal. And when they are equal, you get, I mean, they are normalized to delta functions, so. And in fact, instead of writing delta like this, I will pretend as if these labels are discrete. Okay, that's just, I'm going to pretend it, uh, but you understand that these are involving both delta functions and maybe Dirac delta, uh, chronicle delta functions. So I'm just writing it like this. But if you don't like this, you can think of it in these terms. Anyhow, so now that I have uh, written down the normalization for um, the out states based on some intuition and some hand waving, we'll make it more precise later and we'll, I'll convince you that indeed what I'm saying is true unless it already appears obvious. Um, I can now also similarly write down for in states. Okay, and remember uh, when you are looking at the inside in the far future, you have many possibilities. It's not just two particles you collide, you can collide n number of particles. So the, all those possibilities are there. And that is why you have um, lots of possibilities for the in-state also, okay? Good, so 
we have these things and then I had also remarked that the uh, these states form a complete set okay meaning any set any state in the final state can be expressed as a linear sum of or a superposition of the out states similarly for the in states so this implies that I have a I should have a completeness relation and that would be alpha alpha I'm using for out where I sum over alpha so again alpha is not uh, only discrete it would be continuous also but I'm just uh, using sigma and it is understood that if, L, uh, if those indices which are continuous you have to integrate over not sum over okay and this will be yeah that and that will be um, identity and similarly for your in states Okay, so this is the completeness uh, relation. Okay, also um, remember these are two different bases for the same Hilbert space. Okay, it's not that they are living in two different Hilbert spaces, these in and out states. And clearly you can express out states for example in terms of in states and vice versa so let me do that let me also write this as since the in states since the in states and out states are two different bases of the same Hilbert space I can do the following so I take let's say beta n which I can write it as identity times beta n and for the identity I insert this this completeness relation so I get alpha out again here alpha out sum over all alpha and here you have a beta in and what is this this is just s alpha beta that's the s matrix element okay so i've written beta in one of the basis elements as a linear sum of the out states and the coefficients are precisely the s matrix elements okay so you understand what we are doing Okay, we want to know we want to know, know these uh, these coefficients s alpha beta. Okay, once you know these elements, you will be able to predict what will happen in the future. Okay, so these coefficients are the s matrix elements. Okay, good. Now I'll show you something else. Um, so, you know, you are going from, when you are going from in state to out state, what you're doing is you are changing basis, one uh, basis of, you're going from one basis to another basis in the Hilbert space. Okay, and uh, these are, these bases, as I have argued here, they are these are orthonormal bases okay so you are basically going from one set of orthonormal bases to another set of orthonormal bases basis vectors okay so if you do so then your transformation matrix 
okay will have some property it will be unitary and that's what i'm going to show that your s matrix is unitary so let's show this so i take um, some state gamma in and take its product with another no, not sig did i call it sigma no let's call it delta delta in okay let's evaluate this now what is this object this object is just uh, delta of delta gamma okay where remember this this kronecker delta is a could uh, would involve in 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 general uh, dirac delta functions also because delta is not only discrete it also has continuous parameters like momenta so this is this object but i can write this thing um by inserting a a complete set involving only involving out states so this would give me so here i insert a set of out states and okay which is is equal to um, this I can take in so you have delta in alpha out and you have here out gamma in which I will write as this I can write as alpha out delta in but then I have complex conjugation alpha out gamma in and this is what this we have been calling s matrix okay s alpha gamma so you write this as s alpha gamma and this is what s alpha delta star okay and that is the condition of unitarity that this sum is equal to let me write this this thing here delta of delta gamma i wish i had chosen instead of delta something else here but anyway so this is the condition of unitarity so we say that the s matrix is unitary okay so i know something about this matrix it's unitary i um, now let's try to have a little bit more understanding actually very little um, understanding of the in and out states okay we are going to spend some time on it but there's uh, something very trivial that i can already say about it so imagine you have um, one particle state so you have only one particle so far in past you have one particle now since there is only one particle and there is nothing else interacting with it that one particle is going to evolve into one particle state in future also so it's one particle state remains one particle state so when you take that one particle state okay you can decompose into its um, into various momentum components okay so the basis states at time t equal to zero let's focus on the in states you will label them as k in <coughs> okay and when you look at far future and you go backwards at two time t equal to zero you will have basis states as p out okay and since a single particle state evolves to single particle state there is nothing else going to happen it's clear that a basis state k in is same as k out so there is no distinction between in and out state as far as single particle states are concerned
see there is only one label k it's not k comma p it's one okay so even though the theory is interacting your single particle states uh, your your in states corresponding to single particle states and in state out states corresponding to single particle state they are the same there is no distinction between them and also you can imagine uh, the vacuum okay so a vacuum will evolve into vacuum uh, a vacuum will not turn into n, n particle states okay because that will violate um, all these conservation laws so vacuum is going to re remain vacuum so it's again clear that vacuum in is same as vacuum out okay so these are few things that i wanted to say in this video and we would um, start a more careful analysis of these things and some of the things which i have uh, written based on intuition or some hand waving i will make them more concrete next time okay so see you in the next video